I know you're thinking, Sean, talking about cloud computing? I couldn't imagine it. But this is a little bit different. The difference is subtle. I mean, yes, we're talking about the same song, right? Cloud computing, cloud native, using all of those cloud tools. So yeah, it's the same song, but like I say, it's it's new dance moves because we know that the cloud infrastructure is very flexible and very scalable. We can do localized things. We can do region specific things. But when it comes to actually developing applications, there are some real advantages as well. One of those huge advantages is that we always have the latest technologies. If you were developing on-prem, all of your stuff in-house where you have all of the tools and libraries and all that stuff, you have to keep all of the stuff updated. But if you're using cloud native tools, you're just accessing someone else's services and they keep those services completely up to date. You don't have to worry about maintaining your libraries if you are just accessing somebody else's service. And so there are some big advantages, not just to having your infrastructure in the cloud, but also developing and running your applications in the cloud saves your developers or the people who maintain your development infrastructure a lot of work. It's pretty cool. Now, historically, a lot of applications are what we call monolithic apps. They're like, you have one single application, yes, with lots of moving parts, but it's usually packaged together in one unit. This is the kind of thing where like you download the installer and install it on your computer, or you ship out CDs with your applications on it. And this is not just a way of distributing apps, but it was also how apps are developed. They're self-contained, right? You don't have to usually install a database on your workstation in order to use the program that needs a database. It's usually all part of the single installed unit. And since it's usually all self-contained and it's all monolithic, that means that there's usually a single programming language that is being used. Now that's not a bad thing. That makes programming a lot easier if all of your libraries that connect together happen to be you know, on the same platform, the same language, so that they automatically connect together and you don't have to write you know, bridging code to bridge two weird libraries together in order to use the different features that your programming language has, but you are limited to that single language or developing all those weird tie-ins together. When it comes to updates, that usually means that the entire application receives an update. So you say, okay, hey, there's a new version 1.3 of my super cool app. And so the person would then download that new version and install it on their computer. And they would get an entire new self-contained monolithic app on their computer or even a web-based service. If this is if this is your uh, traditional on-prem developed thing, historically they too have been monolithic apps. A version means an entirely new version of the whole program. Now that is not inherently bad. There's nothing wrong with having version 1.4 that's coming out this year and it's going to give you all sorts of new features and a whole list of new features that that new monolithic program brings you. It's not bad, but it is different because with cloud applications, usually there's not one big monolithic application. It usually has lots of parts. And I like to think of this like a sandwich. If you have an application that is a sandwich, cloud apps are like that sandwich deconstructed. You have a pile of ham and then you have a slice of cheese and you have a piece of bread up here and a piece of bread over here. And they're all tied together so that the user experiences the entire sandwich, but you don't necessarily have to develop every individual piece of that sandwich. That's where microservices come into play because rather than developing a way for the button that you click to then tie into another part of your application, you can have microservices that are designed to function independently and communicate with other microservices to accomplish something that a traditional app would have to do all internally. One big advantage of this is that you can have feature upgrades without having a full release. Like if there doesn't have to be version 1.5, five of your application, you could just have a database microservice that now has a really cool new feature of auto backing up. And you wouldn't even have to touch your pile of ham to 
extend my metaphor further than it probably makes sense. Just because you have a feature upgrade on one component doesn't mean you have to change anything on the other components. So you can have more incremental improvements instead of waiting for a big rolled together all in one monolithic version upgrade. And if you remember the original slide when we started talking, the, those underlying microservice updates, those are done by the provider, right? We're using their services. Their microservices are managed by them in the background. And so we don't even have to do anything a lot of times to get some feature upgrades on our apps. Just by using those cloud-based services, our application can get better and better when other people do the work behind the scenes. So you might be thinking, Sean, you keep saying that the old model isn't necessarily bad and there's not anything inherently wrong with doing on-prem development or on-prem hosting of some of the aspects of your application. Why don't we just do both? Why can't we do on-prem and cloud? And of course, you know where I'm going with this. We can. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing. You don't have to be a cloud developer or an on-prem local developer. You can do both. Uh, in fact, you can create new functionality on your existing on-prem application, for instance, by using cloud services. Let's say that everything you're doing on-prem is working perfectly fine but you don't wanna to have to buy new servers in order to implement a feature that you've been wanting to add all along. Well, in that case, you could maybe, instead of doing that capital expenditure of buying those servers for on-prem, keep your existing app working like it is and then have that new functionality rely on the cloud. So then you end up with, well, I'm, I'm kind of tipping my cards here, but you end up with a hybrid situation where you have some locally and some in the cloud. You can also use this mentality. Let's say you have things working good and you'd like to be in the cloud, but you still got to have things working. And so you could maybe slowly migrate pieces of your application into the cloud. We talked about this earlier on when we talk about how we can migrate from local to the database. When it comes to your actual applications, the same thing is true. You can migrate piecemeal or in small chunks incrementally from where you are now until you're more and more cloud native, until you reach a point where you're like, I'm happy with this split. If you want to stay split, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then of course, hybrid means that it can be blended. Right now, again, sometimes that requires work because if everything is monolithic, sometimes expanding some of it out to the cloud is going to require work. But especially in the case of creating new functionality in the cloud, well, you're going to have to do some development for the new functionality anyway. So if you start from scratch with your new functionality with the mindset of it's going to be in the cloud, it might not be that much more work than just adding something on prem to your existing application. And just like moving your infrastructure to the cloud has some major benefits, moving your applications themselves to the cloud has some major benefits too. First of all is the big one of cost. Cloud presence, it can be small, especially at first. You may not need to have a huge infrastructure, especially if you're doing like a hybrid situation. You can start small and you'll only have to pay for that small amount. Remember, you only pay for what you use in the cloud. So that cost could be minimal, especially at first. You have a lot of pre-built APIs. Now we're gonna talk about APIs in length later on in the skill, but a lot of pre-built APIs means that the on-ramp to doing things in the cloud, either altogether or partially, you have a head start. It's a quick on-ramp to do those things. And the cloud is designed to work in pieces. And so that whole idea of putting some things in the cloud and keeping some things remote, that's how cloud is designed so it's not going to be like you're doing something less than ideal. You're going to be using the cloud to its fullest, even if part of that is still on-prem. Now, reliability. We've talked about this with infrastructure. The same is true when it comes to applications. Cloud native means that it's highly available by default because you have more computers available for you to use than you could ever use. So if an entire data center goes down, one, you don't have to worry about fixing it because that's your cloud provider's job. And two, you're instantly going to be moved to another data center that is going to work. So you have high availability built in. Uh, you have load balancing and failover, again, built in because of the massive infrastructure that cloud providers have. If you need load balancing and failover support, 
All you have to do is pay for the usage that you're going to have or the backups that you need in place. And then boom, you have that built in without having to buy lots of new hardware to make it happen. Of course, along that same line with all of that infrastructure in place, the cloud infrastructure in place by your cloud provider, scalability is easy, simple. Again, it's all part of cloud computing. You can start with the functionality you need. And then if that changes, you can change the infrastructure for your applications on the fly. And you can microscale or you can scale microservices both up and down, right? Yes, you can buy more if you need it, but then if you don't need it anymore, you're not stuck with idle servers. They can scale down just as easily as they can scale up because microservices allow you to do that. And of course, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but monitoring is baked in too, because all of these servers are managed by somebody else. So all of they're doing all of their monitoring. And that's something that you have access to. You have to, you have the ability to monitor how your microservices are doing, how all of the APIs are communicating, how the servers are doing, if there's been failover and load balancing and all that stuff, it's all baked in because it's how they bill you. And so you get to see what's going on because that monitoring again is an advantage to them. So they know how much to charge and you, so you know how much you're using. Like I said, it's a very subtle difference between having your infrastructure move to the cloud versus actually developing applications in the cloud or on-prem and how they communicate and what that actually means. But when it comes to actually doing cloud native development of applications, there's a whole gamut of, of usefulness that you get no matter how deep you wanna dive into the cloud native pool.